morning everybody. I'm in Brainerd, Minnesota. Getting my trailer unloaded before we head to Minneapolis. We'll put something else on it there and that'll take us home. indoor delivery which is my favorite though the weather is still really nice outside it's still nice to be able to do this inside so just about done so the paperwork's already all taken care of my straps are rolled up my tarps are rolled up tied onto the deck behind me right behind my cab on the trailer and all my bungees are put away as soon as they get the rest of this wood off the trailer. We can back out of here and we'll be on our way. It's going to be a good day. Just like that, we're empty. Now I have to be careful about when I leave here. So, I mean, I've already started my day, right? So I guess actually it doesn't really matter at this point. My appointment in Minneapolis is two and a half hours away from here. All right? My appointment's at 5 p.m. And it's now 12.30. So I don't have to be there for a while. So I think we're going to leave here right away and try to get there early. I'd rather wait there than here, right? And my cl the clock's already started. We're already going. The, the day's already started. So I'm going to go over there and we'll probably have to wait a little bit. But I know that the load gods back in the office have some special tricks up their sleeves. And very persuasive personalities. <laughs> they might be able to get me in early. They're going to talk to their people. Their people are going to talk to their people. Their people get back to our people. Our people will talk to me and I'll be like, hey, could I get in a little bit early? And they'll be like, maybe. <laughs> That's exactly the answer I'm going to get, maybe. So if I get over there... If suddenly they have an opening, like someone didn't show up or someone cancels or something, they can be like, hey, is your truck here? We can load them now. And I got to be there and be ready so that I can be like, I'm there. It doesn't take too long to load because it's like loads of shingles, right? So you throw on, there's usually seven layers. There's four, 13 skids. You just throw that on there, throw this over there. Thinking in my head, thinking to myself in my head right now. It shouldn't take too long. We might... Make it all the way back. Oh, I gotta grab fuel on the way down there yet. Oh, I gotta figure out where the best fuel prices are. Let's see, I have this app, it's called WEX, W-E-X. And uh, it's connected to my fuel card. So what I do is I log into this app. And then it shows me where the best fuel prices are within 25 miles of me, or I can say on my route. What's the, what's the cheapest fuel on my road? Because when you have a fleet card, you get discounts at different places, like below, uh, like posted price, because we, we buy so much fuel that we get discounts. And those discounts are reflected in these prices in here. So I know what the true price is that I'm paying. Very, very handy. So let's see, nearby here, we're looking at, okay, 4.15.9. Okay, and let's see if I uh, search along route. Let's say from here to Shakopee. Well, I've been told it's Shakopee, to Shakopee, whatever. Shakopee. Okay, from current location, search. 
and it'll show me the map and exactly where all the stops are and what my prices are. I'm guessing St. Cloud's probably gonna be cheaper than here. And we're gonna be going right past St. Cloud. They usually have pretty good fuel, pretty good price. And if St. Cloud isn't the cheapest, usually right next door in Clearwater, the TA is the cheapest. For some reason, it's taking a really long time here though. I'm gonna figure this out and uh, we'll plan our route down there and let's get this day going. And there we go. All empty. Just my tarps left. It's a beautiful day out here. Beautiful day. It's a great day to go trucking. What do you say? Hundred and eighty nine US gallons. Hundred and eighty nine gallons. See how many liters that is. Hundred and eighty nine gallons to liters. Seven hundred and fifteen point four four three liters. That was a big one today. Thirty seven point four liters per hundred kilometers. Not bad. 37.4 liters per hundred kilometers in miles per gallon. 6.23. 6.23 miles per gallon. That is within our target range. So in US dollars, this fill up cost us $706.10. In Canadian dollars, it was 957. 98.
look familiar to you? Pembina, North Dakota, right at the border. Those lights right over there, that's the Canadian-US border. Canada's just on the other side. Oh man. Long day. Didn't get border clearance tonight yet, but uh, that's no one's fault. It was too late. I'm pretty sure my customs is clear, but there, I also need my uh, paperwork. It's called an ACI. I think I need to wait for that to be clear. Either way, I've gone far enough for today. I'm tired. I'm happy with how far I've gotten. Uh, I'll wait for confirmation in the morning that I'm clear. I don't need to cross tonight anyway. Just got about another hour and 15 minutes up to Winnipeg where I'm going to deliver these shingles and see what we got after that. I'm uh, just going to turn and burn. I'm going to try to keep making money. The week's only beginning, so got to keep these wheels running. Got to keep them turning. So thanks for watching today, everybody. I appreciate you hanging out with me. It was, uh, it was a nice run. I started out in Brainerd. Went down to Shakopee or Shakopee in Minneapolis. Came back up here to Pembina. It's about a 900 kilometer day or so, somewhere in there, 550 miles. I'm done for today. And this is the scene here, first thing in the morning when the sun's up. This is a very popular truck stop since it's right at the border. See here, there's a bunch of trailers dropped right beside me over there. I don't really like it that they do that because this is the last truck stop before Canada. Canada's just a mile that way. And this is where we all come to stop when we're waiting for border clearance. So that means that this is also the spot where a lot of guys will come and drop their trailer when their loads aren't cleared, but go across the border to go home. If there's problems with the load, like, I've done it before too. When there's a plan for another driver to come pick up the trailer, if I'm in a rush to get somewhere, to get home or something, I can cross the border. And if I don't have a trailer on, I can cross the border, no problem. It's the load that needs to be cleared for the border with customs. So if the load's not cleared or if there's an issue with the paperwork or something's just taking a really long time and there's no you know, end in sight or no solution in sight, what we, could, what we can do is trade this load with another driver. If I need to get going, I can unhook, go, and another driver comes and hooks onto it here and then takes it across the border when it's cleared. That doesn't happen very often, but that, that means that trailers would not be left here on their own, right? But I see a lot of, a lot of trailers left here for a long periods of time, I don't know why, but they're taking up parking spots. But I'm pretty sure they are registered with the truck stop inside there maybe they even pay them for it i would hope so if you're doing that i hope that you're paying them to leave your trailers here but i don't know what their deals are or if they have any deals worked out with the ownership here all i know is that we never used to see this many drop trailers here i don't know everything so it's first thing in the morning i'm just waking up just wrapping up yesterday's vlog for you because i was so tired when i got here it was a good day of driving like just steady driving i got here as fast as i could we ended up getting here at like 1.30 in the morning. So today, the next day for you, I can only get rolling, or I can only start my pre-trip on the logbook legally at 11.30 in the morning. So once that's done, we're gonna get these shingles into Winnipeg and we'll get them delivered around 1 p.m. today. And then we'll see what's next after that. I don't have a plan after that yet, but I'm sure by the time we get there, there'll be something in the works. So far this tire that was wearing faster because it had higher air pressure isn't wearing any faster than this one still. We did lose quite a bit of tread off of that before I realized what the problem was. That was, uh, well it wasn't my fault that it was filled up 15 PSI more than the tire beside it. The guy who put the tire on should have equalized the air pressures, right? But I did realize that it was wearing funny and I didn't know at the time that that could be because of air pressure. 17 years of trucking, I'm still learning basic things that I should know, right? So uh, I learned that now, that if uh, your tires aren't, if one tire's wearing much faster than the other tire, first thing you check is the air pressure. And I know, you guys in the comments section, 
you guys all knew this already, right? So uh, you guys all told me, and my father-in-law told me, my dad told me, everybody told me as soon as they saw my video. Uh, and then I went and checked it, and sure enough, 15 PSI higher in the one that we patched. And that causes this one to wear down a lot faster than this one and all the rest. But we saved it in time. It'll be okay. They'll balance out over time. These tires are doing really well. These are those Blackhawk Chinese tires that I bought. They're from the Hankook family of tires. They're $500 Canadian a tire. As opposed to about, uh, what was it? $800? Two or More than that. For a full set of eight Michelin tires, good Michelin tires, it was going to cost me about just under $8,000, I think. Yeah, just under $8,000. For eight Blackhawks, cost me 4000 even. So that's why I went with these. Lots of saving. Those of you who've been watching, I know I'm repeating myself more so for the, for the new people. These are Blackhawks uh, BDL 71s. My tire size is 295, uh, 75R 22 and a half. So they're a little bit low profile. Not as common to find, but really like these tires so far. They're wearing very evenly, like aside from my mistake over there. All the tires are wearing nice. And since they were uh, a little over half price, as long as I get a little over half the distance out of them that I would the regular tires, I got my money's worth, right? They're holding air. And what are we supposed to do? Everything's getting so expensive, right? I want to support local North American companies. I do, but I also have mouths to feed and I want to get ahead. I want to make some money. Decided to go with these tires, give them a shot. I'll be your guinea pig. I'll keep updating you on how they're wearing and how, how they're doing and see if it was a good choice or not. But so far, I'm happy with the purchase. So I've got to walk around the rest of the truck check my tires if you're wondering why I'm holding a little mini bat. This is my tire thumper. This is what I thump the tires with. <laughs> I don't just walk around with this thing all the time. Maybe I should in some places, but... <laughs> I'm gonna go check the rest of my tires, get my truck ready, and we'll see you in tomorrow's video right here. So please subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. We're gonna deliver these into Winnipeg and we'll see what's next. I'll see you tomorrow. Be safe out there. Please, on the road, drive safe.